So now there's twice as many photons hitting. Would that allow us to shoot, get off any electrons here? Yeah. Well, think about it. Each of the photons is still five electron volts. Each of the individual electrons still is five electron volts. It's still five electron volts per photon. But how much energy does it take to free an electron? 10 electron volts. Remember that the photons are not allowed to cooperate with each other. Each electron can only deliver its set amount of energy. That has to do it by itself. It can only free the electron if it can do it by itself, basically. So this is still not enough to free the electron over here because the photons have, we haven't changed the photon energy. This explains this pattern over here, um, which was if we didn't have any electrons freed, and then we increased the intensity, there was still no electrons freed. So now in Einstein's theory, what does the intensity really tell us? It's really telling us the number of electrons we're sending. When we increase the intensity, what we're really, uh, no, I misspoke. Uh, it's telling us the number of photons we're shooting. It's always important not to confuse the photons and the electrons. I, I told you not to make that mistake. I, I probably made it a bunch already today. All right, so when we increase the intensity, that means that we're shooting more photons per second per square meter. So that's important to have that interpretation now in your mind for when you're solving problems. That's an interpretation you need for a lot of problems and exam problems. Increasing the intensity increases the number of photons per second per square meter. Okay, and we can see how that happened here. But it doesn't increase the energy of the individual photons. Why doesn't it increase the energy of the individual photons? Because that comes from this equation here, and we haven't changed the frequency. So all that the intensity, so how does the intensity deliver more energy? It delivers more energy not by increasing the energy per photon, but by increasing the number of photons. You can, as you see, there's really two ways to affect this energy number here. One way to affect the energy number is to change the energy per photon, and another way is to change how many photons you're shooting. Well, if you're just increasing the intensity directly, all that that's really doing is just increasing the number of photons. We went here from 20 photons to 40 photons per second per square meter, but we didn't change the energy per photon because we didn't change the frequency. That explains why the intensity has no effect on the uh, if we didn't have any electrons being freed in the first place, we're still not going to have any electrons free because we haven't gotten over this, uh, this threshold here. We could call the 10 electron volts here the threshold. Uh, we need to pass that threshold to get anything out. Now, you can see why this was so bewildering to the original scientists because it seems like they're way past the work function. They're putting in 200 electron volts per second per square meter. That seems like more than enough energy. They didn't realize that it was split into little 5 electron volt packets. So here's where the quantization becomes important. Okay. Um, so that explains uh, that portion. All right, so if you're not getting electrons free, increasing the intensity won't do anything for you. And again, for solving problems, remember that when you're increasing the intensity, the reason the light seems brighter is that you're getting hit by more photons per second. The intensity affects the number of photons. It doesn't affect the energy per photon. All right, so let's try something else here. Um, let's try increasing the frequency of this light. So let's go back to this light um, that had the intensity of 100 electron volts per second per square meter. And now we're going to increase the frequency. What's going to be the effect of that on the energy per photon? Because we can see from this equation that energy and frequency are directly related. That's a very important idea. Remember, that didn't appear in classical physics. In classical physics, there was no reason to think that the frequency had anything to do with energy. But now with it, um, Einstein said the frequency determines the energy per photon. Okay, um, so just to make up a number, let's say that now um, the energy per photon is going to be, um, say, uh, Twenty electron volts. I'm just making up these numbers, but let's say it went up to twenty. This is pretty high, but let's say this is twenty electron volts per photon. So by the way, how many photons per second per square meter are we shooting? Remember that this is the intensity, 100 electron volts. 
five photons per second per square meter um, because we know that the intensity is 100 electron volts and that's split into five 20 electron volt packets. All right, now is this going to be enough to free any electrons? Yeah, yeah it's going to be able to free um, some electrons here. Uh, in fact, how many electrons per second per square meter could we theoretically free here? Well, five, because each of these has enough energy. In real life, these wouldn't all succeed maybe in freeing things, but at a maximum, we could free five electrons per second per square meter over here. Okay? Um, and they would also have some extra kinetic energy when they left. How much extra energy would the electron have when it left? Because it only takes 10 electron volts to free it. So if you put in 20 electron volts, the first 10 goes into freeing it, and then there's still 10 electron volts left over. It's just a coincidence that this number is the same as this number. The point is that 20 minus 10 happened to be 10 here. So they would be freed with a kinetic energy of 10 electron volts per uh, electron. Now this is just the maximum energy. Sometimes there's not going to be that efficient of energy transfer. But the maximum kinetic energy that they could have when they leave is 10 electron volts per electron if it takes 10 to free them and there's no wastage with the remaining 10. Okay, well now this explains why if you make the frequency high enough, you can free some electrons even when the intensity is very low. Even when the intensity is low, as long as the individual photons have high enough energy, they can free some electrons, although maybe not very many. All right, and... Um, now let's see what would happen if now we increase the intensity. So now let's say that uh, our, uh, I guess there's a couple things we could do here. So now let's say that we increase the frequency from this point uh, even more. So let's say we increase the frequency even more over here. What's going to be the effect? So if we increase the frequency, um, just to increase the energy per photon, each of the electrons that's freed now should have more excess energy should have more excess energy because there's going to be more energy per photon. For example, maybe we could increase the energy per photon to 25 electron volts. If we increase the energy per photon to 25 electron volts, what would be the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons that are freed? Uh, 15. Yeah, that's right. Good. Okay. So the basic idea here is that the frequency here is basically having an effect on the kinetic energy of the electrons that are freed. That was this result. When they increased the frequency, they, uh, they had a higher kinetic energy per electron. In terms of our particle theory now, what's the main effect of increasing the intensity? If you increase the intensity, what does that change about the light? Um, in terms of the photons. Uh, yeah, the intensity is the, uh, that was our key idea that we saw for the intensity. The intensity is basically reflecting the number of photons per second per square meter that are being shot. Okay, so if we increase the intensity, we would be shooting more, uh, more photons. And the photons already have enough energy to free the electrons. So if we're shooting more of them, now we should get more electrons freed. However, we wouldn't expect that to give more kinetic energy to the electrons, because each of the individual photons would have the same energy as before. Okay. All right, so to review the basic interpretations here, um, if we increase the intensity of the light, we know we would perceive that as it becoming brighter. Um, but how do we interpret that in terms of photons? That's right. On the other hand, let's say we increase the frequency. Well, we know we would perceive that as moving towards the violet end of the spectrum. Um, but how would we interpret that in terms of the photons? What's happening to the photons when we increase the frequency? Increasing the energy per photon. Yeah. Notice that we're not really talking about the kinetic energy of the photon exactly, although I guess maybe you could think of this as the kinetic energy. We were think, uh, when we use the term kinetic energy, we're talking about the kinetic energy of the electrons that are getting freed there. So when we change the frequency, we're changing the energy per photon. And when we change the intensity, we're changing the number of photons. That's what you have to have as problem solving tricks and problem solving points in your notes. When we change the frequency, we're changing the energy per photon. And when we change the intensity, we're changing the number of photons per second per square meter that are getting sent. Okay, and now this explains our photoelectric effect. When the frequency is low, each of the photons does not have enough energy to free an electron, and it doesn't matter how many of them you send. It doesn't matter how high the intensity is, there's still no electrons freed. 
If the frequency is high enough, you can free some electrons. And then if you make the frequency even higher, each of the photons now has extra energy to contribute to the kinetic energy of the electron. Uh, and finally, once, you start, once the frequency is high enough to free electrons, if you increase the intensity, well, that is more photons um, being sent. So now you can kick off more electrons. But you wouldn't expect that to change their kinetic energy, because that depends on the energy per photon. OK, so Einstein very neatly explained all the various elements of the photoelectric effect here. And uh, if I remember right, this is actually what he got the, the Nobel Prize for, uh, not for relativity. OK, so um, that's our basic uh, quantization here, is that you can only deliver energy in discrete packets, not continuously. The energy is quantized, the energy of the light beam anyway. It's quantized into the photons.